We're we're on this for chair. Oh right. We stand the pledge of allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Morning, everyone. Morning, morning, morning. morning everybody. All right. Do we have any additions or deletions? Not at this time, Mr. Chair. Not at this time. I need a motion. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. And a motion to second. Any more discussion? If not, those in favor. Aye. Polls, well, she carried. All right, consent agenda. We've got about 12 items on there. If you gentlemen want to look, is there anything that you want to have moved? Otherwise, we'll keep moving. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve our consent agenda. I have a motion. I need a second. Second. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair, I had a, I had a question in relation to. Um, I believe it was the food license renewal, and it looked like there was uh, two businesses or a business with uh, with uh, two licenses on that or duplicates. And I and I don't have my computer open. I apologize for that right now. But and and this may be this may be immaterial to the issue, but. Um, and I think I could always follow up with, with Nathan on that too. But um, in that listing, I believe. Oh, thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it was in the listing where it listed all of them. You're, I'll, I'll let you because you're faster. Yes, sir. No, it's going to be way before that. It's, it's going to be under, under that consent. It's, it's for the for the establishment in uh, in Swanville. So uh -huh. that one? there you go. So. Actually, no, actually, it's not. It's. Um, it's the grocery store, excuse me. So you have Paul and Kathy's grocery listed down about three fourths of the way down. And then you also have uh, Big Johnson's Market. And uh, on the third, uh, as the third one down from the top, both with the same address there. And I was just curious. Do we have two different businesses operating in the same location? Um, there that would need to be licensed. Um, just those are an upsell you're talking about. Yeah, those are an that's uh, the meat, the meat place, and then the grocery are separate. You think? Do we have a meat processing company? Yeah, but uh, but but uh, Paul Ripplinger is, you know. He's kind of notorious for, uh, not notorious, noted, I'll say, for his meat processing. Event. I was just curious that if that would, if there was a mistake there or if there's been a change of ownership, um, but why we would have two licenses for that for the same address. Well, maybe we can have uh, Nathan put an email out to us to and, and, and identify we, why. We, I, but I just wanted to bring that to attention yeah, I, as I as I went through the yeah. consent agenda. I'd seen that, and I just I thought it was worthy of an input. Well, sure, yes, good catch. Yes, for sure. I just did a quick search, and that uh, 129 Main Street is the address for Paul and Kathy's, and the address for Big Johnson's Market on on Google says 309 DeGaff Avenue. So. I, I think you're correct in your observation that there's a there might be a, a um, there. Mr. Chair, then I think I know what this means. If you said a 309 DeGraff Avenue, I believe Big Johnson's Market would be would be the grocery store in Swanville. DeGraff Avenue is a street in Swanville, and so rather than that saying Uppsala and it it's being 129 Main Street, and I believe that would be, um, and I'm trying to, so that the 
grocery store then in Uppsala must have changed hands, and that used to be <clears throat> called something else that I can't remember, and I should know that. I was just there Saturday, um, and, and I didn't notice that. So I think that um, I think that the address and city under Big Johnson's Market should be should be uh, DeGraff Street in Swanville, Minnesota. There. All right, we'll get that clarified for the board. Well, other than that, Mr. Chair, I'm 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 fine. Yeah, I'll have good catches. Any more discussion? If not, this will be a roll call. I got a motion and a second. Commissioner Zelensky? Aye. Casper? Aye. Blaine? Yeah. Lemire? Aye. Myself? Aye. Aye. Public Works Report. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the board. Good morning, Tony. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. have uh, one item for you this morning. We're going to review our 2024 transportation program. Right here, Matt, we have a, uh, a list. And if you go to the next page, we have a map. Map's kind of easier to, to read a little bit about. More map. It's our straight road. There we go. So here's to have a map view. Uh, we have a pretty large program this year. Uh, we're anticipating it to be just a little over $11 million. When you look at that map there, you'll see we, we have a large paving program that we're proposing. It's going to be approximately 41 miles of pavement. So as we kind of uh, been reviewing the market um, and trying to make some decisions, there has been much uh, for projects led around the area. So we're hoping that uh, we're going to see some competitive bids here in February. So you look at this, our, our paving program is going to come up, or estimating to be a little over 7 million uh, for just paving this year, 41.3 miles. And we have our CASA 1 on the, the northern part of the county there from uh, Pillager heading south. We have our CASA 3 also in the northern part, our CASA 47 just uh, northeast of Little Falls. Our County Road 204, County Road 205, our County Road 206. That, that again helps with that northern set there. And then our, our County Road 264, 275, 285, and in that, that general direction over by 47. Those are our paving projects this year. Um, we're anticipating a February bid on these. And as I said, you know, the market's been kind of interesting. We haven't seen a lot of uh, projects led at this point. So we're hoping that uh, the contractors are. Are hungry and, and want to sharpen their pencil and, and give us some good bid numbers on these projects. We look at some of the other stuff. We have uh, a few different bridge projects. We have our uh, bridge project that's already been let and awarded. And then we're also doing a, uh, a timber bridge replacement put in culverts on our, our County Road 220. That'll also be a February letting. The rest of the dots, you kind of go and kind of see them. The dots are our, our culvert replacement projects. So we have a roads on, or culverts on 225 and County Road 237. We have a, a handful of culverts on each. And we anticipate letting these after our paving program, uh, just in the event that our bid numbers from the pavement don't come in where we want them at. This is an opportunity for us to, to remove something and stay within inside of our budget term means. Next page is our, uh, our sign of soil ground and striping. So this is federal. This is a federal project. Uh, it's called HSIP, Highway Safety Improvement Funding. So we have we apply for external funds, and these are some of the the roads that we're we'll putting in a, a ground in, uh, sinusoidal or rumble strip on the bog line, and then putting in uh, a wet reflective pavement marking for elevated uh, elevated uh, markings or improvements. Any questions with? With the 2024 pavement or the 2024 transportation program. Good question, Mr. Chair. Well, I, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Tony, uh, uh, County Road 214 there, which was north off of uh, 27 and north of 238, and we just did that 
that repaved on that road, what, a year ago before two years ago? Um, this is this is more, I would say, more unusual that we would go back and do the, the sinusoidal and that after it, or is it isn't it typical that you try and do that when you do that repave or am I or am I wrong there? Uh, Mr. Chair, not necessarily. So typically what we do uh, when we make these kind of safety improvements, we're, we're applying for outside funds, federal funding, usually what what funds these. Uh, when we have the opportunity to incorporate those HSIP funds into a contract, that's when we'll perform them at the same time. So our, our normal pavement program includes just normal latex paint on our roadways. It's a little more cost effective, uh, but it doesn't last as long. And so if we're able to bring in outside funds. That's when we, we do a, a little bit higher grade, and that's where we put in these, these sinusoidals or your bumble strips, and then we'll put in the ground in uh, wet reflective paint. You know, your, your price difference between the two, just the paints is almost 30 cents a linear foot. And then you look in the actual ground in portion. So that, that's almost 50 cents to a dollar a foot compared to about eight cents a foot when we just do our paint. So there's a considerable difference. That's why we look for those outside funds to, to perform those kind of projects. And that's what you're seeing here. A few years ago, we were able to establish new pavement. Now we got these funds to come in and make that safety improvement and they'll kind of carry through the life of that project or that pavement. Um, so um, there won't be there won't be any other changes to that roadway or surface. There won't be any extension for of the shoulder or anything like that. Mr. Chair, no, uh, it'll just be the your edge line or your fog line, the white line on the edge of the road will be removed. It'll be replaced with the sinusoidal roll the strip and then uh, improved paint or striping. Okay, very good. Thank you, sir. I'm not going to let you get off that. Uh, question for you. You bring up wet line a couple of times. You, I know what that means, but for the TV land, uh, you know, what the explanation when you call it a wet line? So uh, your normal paint's a latex paint. Um, it, it lays pretty thin. It has beads in it but it doesn't have a long service life. Uh, ground in wet reflective striping is a thicker paint. It's an epoxy, so a different kind of material. And then the beads are incorporated inside that paint and they essentially float. So as that striping starts to wear on um, regular latex paint, the beads come, come off the top and it's not as bright. But with the ground in wet reflective, as the striping wears, there's beads essentially entrapped inside of that, that stripe and you'll have continued reflectivity for a longer lifespan. Great explanation. Mr. Chair. Mr. Jansky. Thank you. I was on the same question that I was asking or going to ask. I'll further that, and I can't remember this. Are they four or six inches? Don't, didn't we go wider at one point in time with that fog line, or am I wrong on that one? Uh, Mr. Chair, you're correct. There's there's been uh, many different striping contracts throughout the county over the years. Yeah. Um, there's initiative at one time to move from a four inch fog line to a six. Uh, yeah. so that's considered an improvement just to have that additional width. You know, but most of that was done in a latex paint. Okay. Uh, okay. So that'd be one at one time that was done. You know, and as that paint wears, some of it's getting put back at four, or some of it's staying at six. And when we do these different ground in stripings, um, these are typically coming back at six inches. That's the recommendation for, for uh, in, improvement, I guess. And so these fog lines are six inches, but uh, it's not necessarily uniform throughout the county. Okay, and then Mr. Chair, I had one more question. Go ahead. Could please, have we had this Steinwheel Soto, sorry, I pronounced that wrong. Have we had that program long enough with the paint versus just the regular fog line to actually see the difference in where, uh, in in need of replacing that paint or painting over it, have we actually seen, or is there really truly a benefit that we've seen? I, I get the theory because it's ground in, I totally get that, but have we actually seen that or haven't we had it long enough? Well, Mr. Chair, you know, we, we've had sinusoidal striping. So sinusoidal is actually the, the rumble strip. Yeah, yeah. So the, the striping, is is the paint that goes on it absolutely so when you when you look at a fog line just on your normal surface that's where you see your latex striping and then your 
your wet reflective striping. Yeah. And we have some of that inside the county as well. Um, but yeah, typically you'll see that your latex paint lasts you know, two to three years, um, maybe five if it's a very low volume road. Yeah. Um, so from a maintenance perspective in our county, we split our county into thirds and we stripe a third of the county every year, unless it's a higher volume road, then we'll come back and hit it every year or every other year. So then when you move from your latex paint to your wet reflective or your uh, your, wet, your wet reflective epoxy paints. Now that you're, now you're seeing a lifespan instead of that one to three, you're starting to see the three to five to a little bit longer. And then when you groove that paint in, so you recess it a little bit, then that paint doesn't take all the, the brunt of the plow riding on top of it. Absolutely. And then we're seeing some additional lifespan out of that. But I would say, yes, you do see the difference um, from an economic standpoint without with with without outside funding i'm not sure if we could fiscally say that that'd be the, the right call to make um and that's why when on our maintenance side we come back and only stripe in latex we're not striping back in that that way reflective epoxy very good mr chair asked and answered thank you all right <clears throat> any more discussion gentlemen this will be a roll call vote uh i need a motion to request to uh, approve the 2024 i'll make that motion sorry sure. right, i'll second that a motion in a second again any more discussion not i got it just real quick tony i was going to mr chair go ahead tony i was going to ask you have you seen since the valley blades around these newer trucks that that's really raised heck with the uh, hog lines or isn't it so noticeable uh, Mr. Chair, no, what we've seen with the belly blades is just a more uh, economic uh, snow removal, ice removal, it, instead of having to make, you know, three or four passes, we're able to do it in, in two to three. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's where you're seeing that belly blade. It does, and the majority of the belly blade uh, lands inside your travel lane. Okay. You know, so our, our striping takes the front of it when we're, we're on top of the center line. Um, our wings are usually what's hitting the fog line. I see. So we haven't seen uh, much of a difference between having that belly blade on there versus not. We okay. just, just an improvement in the actual ice and hard pack removal. Very good. Thank you. Thank All you. All right, Chair. No problem. Any more discussion? Yeah, this is a roll call vote. I do have a motion and a second. Commissioner Casper. Aye. Blaine. Aye. Lemire. Aye. Zelensky. Aye. Myself is an aye. Motion carries. Thank you for that, sir. Thank you, Chair. That's all I have. Unless anyone has any questions for me. All good, Paul. Thank right. you. Thank you. Good day. Moving Thank right you. along. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I don't have anything to bring before the board today. And again, unless there's any questions for me. I have one thing and we'll take pictures, but I had a request to take a photo. That's right. So, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I think we can do that one at our conclusion. Okay. Um, but I thought that it was proper. We have a new chair that we can take a group photo with the, obviously with the new chair. All right, so let's uh, get down. Let's go to the committee reports and we're going to start. I'm going to see here. I'm going to start something different. Commissioner Zelensky. And what are the dates that you would like to have there, Mr. Chair? Well, let's find out. How to off guard. It is January 28th. 28th through February 17th. It's three weeks. It's three weeks. Three weeks. Okay. And you wish, wish me to start? Is that what you Yes, did? I did. Very good. Okay with that. I'm fine. All right. Very good. So I'm going to jump right into so January 30th. 8 30 in the morning, we've got a board meeting, a planning meeting, excuse me, right here in the boardroom. Planning meeting at 8 30. At 9 o'clock in the morning, um, there's a 911 stakeholders outreach forum, the city of St. Cloud at St. Cloud State, just for the record, there it, that's at nine o'clock. I won't be attending that, but it's, it's happening. At six o'clock that same evening, here in the boardroom, we've got a planning commission, board of adjustment, BCBOA. On the 31st at one o'clock in the afternoon, there's a Central Minnesota Emergency Services Board meeting. That's at the city of St. Cloud. Prior to that, as often happens, there's a executive committee meets at 11 o'clock. Because I was the chair in 2023, I'll probably attend that executive committee meeting also. On February 1st, 10 o'clock in the morning, there's a State Emergency Communications Board Legislative Committee meeting. 
That is a virtual meeting. And at three o'clock that same afternoon, the Public Safety Communications Conference Advisory Group meets at three o'clock. That is also in a virtual setting. On the 2nd of February, 8.30 in the morning, we'll be having a planning meeting and that will be at Public Works. Turning the page to February 6th, 8.30 in the morning, we've got a planning meeting scheduled right here in the boardroom. On the 9th, Friday the 9th at 10 o'clock in the morning, I have a Central Minnesota uh, Emergency Services Board RAC meeting scheduled. That's a virtual meeting. Once again, turning the page to the 13th, Tuesday the 13th, 9 o'clock in the morning, there's a county board meeting scheduled. That's right here in the boardroom. On the 14th at 8.30 in the morning, I believe there is a department head meeting. On the 15th at 10 o'clock in the morning, there's a Central Minnesota Emergency Services Board owners and operators meeting, and that is a virtual meeting. And Mr. Chair, that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Casper. Okay. <clears throat> I will jump right into February. February 1 on Thursday, I have a Central Minnesota Council on Aging meeting. That will be at Zoom at 10 o'clock. And then I'll skip down to February 7th and 8th. That'll be a Wednesday, Thursday. A ditch meeting over at Arrowwood and Alexandria. Then I'm going to jump to the following week. On the 14th, Morrison Todd Wadina. Greg, can you help me with the rest of those initials? Community Health Board. Community Health Board, thank you. Up in Staples. That's at uh, 1600 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the 14th, Wednesday. Then an airport meeting on Thursday, the 15th. Over at Little Mall, too. All right, thank you. Commissioner Blaine. Um, on, uh, starting on January 29th at 530, there's an extension committee meeting. Um, Rosemeyer Board's having a forum on the re on the remodel of the Minnesota State Capitol on the 31st. Um, for anybody who's interested, uh, that forum is called the Minnesota Capitol then and now, and it talks about the cost and what the renovation of the State Capitol, um, which is the most treasured building in the state of Minnesota. Um, on Easy. Um, on Monday, February 12th, from 10 o'clock till noon, will be the Quad County Extension Meeting in St. Cloud. Um, I believe that'll be at the St. Cloud uh, um, no, you're going. I, don't think well, so. I can't remember the name of the building, it's and I didn't write it down. It's the it, it's the it's the it's their new government building over by Fleet Farm. Um, I'll I'll Ferris West County Service Center. Thank you. The, you got to hand it to Commissioner Zielinski. And it, just to let you know, all the commissioners are invited to go. Yep. Yep. And um and that'll be a, that'll be a pretty important meeting too. Um, because we have another role to fill um, with with extension too. Um, the only other thing I have um, um, is on the 15th of February, um, the Egg Society will meet at 7 p.m. Um, other than that, that's all I got for you. Commissioner Blaine. Excuse me, Mr. Chair, where's the Egg Society meeting? The Egg Society will typically will meet in this room. Okay, very good. Um, unless it's unless it's already scheduled. Fifteen. Fifteen. Thank you. On the seventy-first, I'm supposed to have an answer a meeting at nine o'clock, but I'm on um, that to find out more on that because of the issues that's progressing on that. Um, on the fifth, we'll be at Cushing Town Hall at five o'clock. Actually, at four thirty. 
discussing with, with the Minnesota Department of Transportation the J terms that they're installing in Randall area. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 Yellow Ribbon Committee, Little Falls Legion, 330. Not that, not that. And Matt, I know I keep asking you this, but I have a safety committee meeting listed on there, but I don't exactly. Then that's all I got. Thank you. All right, thanks. Again, I don't know if Commissioner Jelinski brought, brought this up. Planning Commission Board of Adjustments at 6 o'clock on the 30th. Yep. Okay, so if you did do that one, otherwise, I'm sure. Uh, you guys got me covered. Anything else for that? Mr. Chair, I'll just, uh, Commissioner Casper brought up on the 7th and 8th of February. Um, I, I believe he referred to it as a ditch meeting. Just for clarification, it's a drainage conference uh, put on by AMC, and it's 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 an opportunity uh, for I, I plan to attend as well, along with Commissioner Casper, to learn more about the ditch and drainage proceedings, um, how, how to apply for grants, how, who, what other agencies that you have to coordinate with in drainage um, with that authority. But I just wanted to clarify in case somebody was looking for a ditch meeting here. Um, it's it, this is put on across the state. All right, thanks for that. Yeah, if I wasn't at uh, if I wasn't at GRE regional meetings, I would be I would be going to that meeting too. I think that I think that'd be beneficial. Well, especially if we can get some grants there for the landowners and the ditch is that a great opportunity. So, yeah, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Anything else, gentlemen? If not, time is it nine twenty six? All adjourned. Thank you.